Imagine if I just lean just a little bit more. So watch this. Welcome to the channel. It's Rich from Boosting Jeans Riders. We are back in the parking lot. And the reason I'm back in the parking lot because we're gonna go over, yes, U-turns. Now, what I'm gonna talk about in U-turns is how to make them a little bit more smoother and just basically adding on something to the basic U-turns. So if you've been practicing your basic U-turns and still struggling with getting a 30-foot or 24-foot U-turn, maybe there's something that you're missing that you might wanna add to the basic U-turns. Now, this is only if you give it a valid effort. What I'm speaking of, a valid effort, if you've been practicing for an hour, maybe two hours, and you're just not getting it, something going wrong. It may be something that you're doing wrong, or it may be what I'm going to show you. I just call these additions. So add-ons to your U-turn that you're probably already doing and don't even know you're doing it. I'm going to show you two, maybe three, I don't know yet. I want to keep the video rel relatively short so you can understand exactly how to knock these U-turns out. Because a lot of times, riders get in the parking lot, become parking lot experts, and then we see them out on the street. And you know, we travel the whole country and everybody going back to duck walking their bike because they just fearing certain things or they forgetting certain things to do when it comes to the U-turn. This section here is a 24 foot section. And this is what I'm talking about because we know here in the United States, the average lane is 12 feet to 12 feet lanes, 24. And that's what we're gonna talk about. Now we're gonna go over the simple, basic fundamentals of slow riding, which you apply in all your slow riding, and then you just apply this in a U-turn. First thing first, you always wanna be in a friction zone. Now there are some people that like to coast their bikes through, and that's fine if you can do that. I personally wouldn't do it. I feel I have no control coasting my bike through a U-turn. But friction zone, steady throttle, covering the rear brake and using it as needed. Sometimes you don't need the brake. You can actually go smoother without the brakes. So check out that video, I'll plug it in here. And what I call the number one rule of motorcycle is look where you wanna go. Turn behind you, look where you wanna go, turn your body, your whole head, make the U-turn. Now there's two determining factors that a lot of people are actually probably missing when they struggle for these U-turns. One of them is leaning the bike. When you're doing tight turns, 24 foot turns, you can get away with turning the handlebar and just leaning slightly. But when you're doing tight turns, you have to lean the bike. Next thing, you have to turn that handlebar. But the most important thing is look first. Look, lean, turn. That's gonna get you through the U-turn, along with momentum. And momentum is gonna be the first thing we're gonna cover when I get on the bike, is how you gain momentum and some of you guys probably already doing it. That's gonna be the first thing we're gonna cover. And the second thing, which you already know, and I'm gonna tell you right up front, I'm not gonna leave you hanging, is counterbalance. Now, with the come to counterbalance, I want you to make a conscious thought to counterbalance. In this demonstration, I'm really gonna exaggerate it. When you're riding, you don't have to do that. But if you're just kinda of struggling with this, go ahead and exaggerate it until you get to the point to where you really don't have to exaggerate your counterbalance. You can sit straight up on a bike and let the bike lean under you. That's the reason, honestly, that's the reason you should be practicing your cone weaves because that gets you to put that bike leaning under you. Okay, we're gonna get started with the first one. And what I was talking about momentum, as I'm coming toward the camera, you will see that I'm on the right side. And this is why you should be practicing your cone weave. Matter of fact, I'm gonna use these lines real quick to show you what I'm talking about, practicing the cone weave. I don't know if the camera gonna pick it up from this distance, but this gets you going with momentum to do your U-turns. So I'm gonna do it over here on the right side, going between the lines. This gets you to dip the bike. And because with momentum, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna dip the bike. So let me go back around and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Dipping, 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 dipping. And if you're on a big tour like this, a quick tip is sit high on the tank. Now what I mean by momentum is I'm gonna do a dip as if I'm doing a cone weave. I'm gonna dip around a cone and then everything else remain the same. Dip, dip, head turn, look, look lean and go. 
One more time. And then I'm going to show you a second way to do the dip and use that momentum. So coming down here, dip out, dip in, head turn, look lean, and go. And you can see I'm using all my real estate. Now that's the dip when I'm riding close to the curve. The second one is you can ride, and I know a lot of people don't do this, ride, and you decide, okay, I need to make a U-turn. It's clear in front of me, clear behind me. I'm going to make a U-turn. What I'm going to do now is dip one time in, quick head turn around. Everything else remain the same, like your basic riding. Dip in, head turn around, make the U-turn. Just that simple. Okay, I'm gonna go around and do it from the rear. So you can see it from the rear, which means I have to pass the camera up and I'm gonna do it pretty early. So you can see it from this side, from the rear. I'm gonna dip out, dip back in, go around that cone, just like you're doing a cone weave. No different. One more time. No, I tell you what, we're just gonna do the second one. Where we're gonna do it off the curve, dip towards the curve and coming back. Okay, I'm off the curve about three to five feet. Dip in, head turn, come around. Complete the U-turn. Okay, that's the first one. And do it consciously. Now the second one we're gonna talk about and show you is counterbalance. Counterbalance is obviously when you get ready to make a U-turn, your bike leaning one way, you straight up or leaning to the right here in the United States because we make left U-turns legal on the street. What I'm going to do in this case is looking at this camera, I want you to take, pay attention to that. I'm going to switch cameras and you'll see I'm really exaggerating. And you're probably already doing these things, but the order, if you haven't been practicing lately, you want to give it a conscious thought and really exaggerate it. Now, you don't have to do this all the time. Matter of fact, I'm not going to go all the way down. Just come around now. But watch you see. And in this, you're going to see me. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to do one over exaggeration. Then the next one, I'm just going to get off the seat a little bit and ride on my tank or the edge of the tank. Okay. So I'm coming up. I want to make my U-turn. I'm riding high on the tank. I'm going to do a quick head look. Really over-exaggerate. Leaning that bike. It makes your bike feel lighter. But trust me, a 900-pound bike is a 900-pound bike. It's not going to be any lighter, but it gives you that confidence to make it feel lighter when you just right here. Now, the next one I'm going to do I am going to get off the seat just a little bit. I'm going to jump off the seat. Well, not off the bike. I'm going to put my tush kind of halfway off the seat and still over-exaggerate. Now, remember what I said earlier. Everything's remaining the same. You're still riding in a friction zone. You're still having your foot covering a rear brake, using as needed. And you're still steady throttle. And the number one rule of motorcycle, you look where you want to go, turn our head quickly as possible. With that basic, these two add-ons, and having nothing changed, you still use the basic. All now, I'm, only thing I'm doing now is consciously getting off my seat, letting the bike lean, make it feel lighter than it actually is, and making a U-turn. There we go. Just before the turn, then if I need to make a turn, clear in the front, clear behind, off the seat, look where I want to go, make that U-turn. Just that simple. One more time, off the seat. That time my RPM is a little high, which you don't have to do. Steady throttle. That was better. One more time, I'm going to get off the seat a little bit. Look, lean, drop, and go. A quick note, when you're doing these tight turns, it does not require peg or floorboard scraping. It does not require a full lock. In fact, you really don't have to really lean as much. So I can make this turn just by turning my bike, not leaning that much. Now I'm going, obviously, going slow. 
make that turn and complete my U-turn. One more time. I mean, imagine if I'm doing this on a gold wing and making that turn. Imagine if I just lean just a little bit more. So watch this. A little bit more lean, even at the same speed. What's keeping me up? Exactly, momentum. Now, the faster you go, the wider you are going to be. Okay, that concludes today's video. But go ahead and give it a try. You can, as long as you have the basics down and you're struggling with this, if you give yourself a valid effort to try to really learn a U-turn, and now you have to be duck walking your bike in front of people. Okay, my battery died on my other camera. But for today, that is it. So when you go out there and practice, remember, all this is is added on to the basic fundamentals of slow riding. That's why I call them additions or add-ons. But if you're riding, remember, ride long, ride hard, ride strong, but most importantly, ride safe. From Boots and Jeans Riders, I'm Rich, and I'm out. Peace.